Good afternoon. Welcome this third and last conversation session, online session organized by the member side of ESMA, Desert Casaman Foundation. And in this occasion, we are going to debate on memory sites and heritage. We understand in a globalized world like that cultural diversity and the protection of natural heritage and man-made heritage, memory and cultural issues are considered urgent and the development of communication since the second communication of the, the second half of the 20th century is to foster and the concept of international culture to foster these values. The consensus are unquestionable. If, however, some there are some tensions, there are still some uh, arising. There, this need to be preserved as part of humanity. And this raises questions regarding the circumstance in which sites associated with a memory of recent regional or local conflicts can be seen as common to all of humanity and be relevant to the global community. Then fundamental questions related to the purpose and scope of recent memory narratives and whether their values can be defined as universal are also significant. We seek to discuss various routes of experience that led or are on the way to different results, such as Auschwitz-Birkenau, incorporated into the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1979, the Ile de Gorée, center of the slave trade on the African coast, declared World Heritage in 1978, or the ESMA Memory Site Museum, which is currently in the process of presenting its candidacy. It's submitting this, this candidacy. I'm going, who are, who are the organizations that are dealing with this and handling this? The institution I belong to, the museum site ex center of torture and extermination is a historical national museum and it's a court evidence for cases in less humanity it was in nine 2015 was inaugurated as a museum as a site of memory with a museographic intervention that is permanent and today it's to claims and to to convey memory as i said before part is it's uh, in the process of being elizabeth kesselman is a foundation is participating in the organization of these seminars and is committed in the in this past and and the consequence of collective social collectives in Latin America, Spain, and Germany. The, it supports the intercultural dialogue between Germany, Latin America, and Spain, and the scientific and political, and also cultural aspects. And the Global Diplomacy LARD, that is a platform for the exploration of new ways and new diplomacies that are more inclusive that go beyond the traditional policy politics therefore there is a series of professionals very creative professionals from different fields that participate to use different communication tools based on mutual respect and confidence and reformulating the action of a um, collective actions i would like to present our moderator in the last Vivian Bavises, he's professor and researcher at the Wageningen University. She's an expert in food systems and member of the Global Diplomacy Lab 
and she participated in the lab of mass atrocities in the asthma memory site museum it that took place in 2015 some years ago thank you for participating in and a last reminder this is transmitted with simultaneous trans translation to spanish and english so everyone who's connected they can choose in the menu in the lower tab of your screen in the icon of the world uh, they can choose interpretation they can they can choose the channel they prefer vivian i i open the floor for you thank you salome all of you it's a pleasure for me to be here with you moderating this webinar on memory science and heritage we have here four experts that will help us to to go deep in this topic we have thomas michaldo we have el Mauricio Gonzalma, eloy coli and mikey grosita will give more details of their experience as they talk and contribute in this session we are going to start with Thomas Michaldo, he's a uh, license in history, is specialized in modern Jewish history in the Jagiellonian University of Kharkov. And with Proxor, he's associated with the Yashwit Vikna Memorial and Museum. And 2013, in the methodology of guided visits, is responsible of the cooperation with guides, the training and recruitment of guide candidates as well as the development of qualification of the guides who cooperate with the museum. Thank you, Thomas, for being here with us, and I give you the floor. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the in invitation, and uh, it's uh, really my, my big pleasure and honor to, to be here and to be able to share with you a few thoughts on Auschwitz Museum, on uh, Auschwitz Memorial and on the memory and how we try to convey and what we really try to convey to people who come to visit our, our, our memorial. And I'm really hoping for a very fruitful discussion after, uh, after our presentations. Um, but before I really start, I would like to tell everybody a little bit more about how Auschwitz really became uh, a memorial site because I think it's, it's crucial in order to understand what is our heritage and where we, uh, where we really started. In fact, soon after the camp was liberated, so soon after January 19, 1945, uh, the first survivors of the camp uh, started coming back to the premises of, of the former camp. Some of them, because they tried somehow to cope with the the traumas they uh, they got when when they stayed in, in in a camp and they believed this would be a a good way of healing themselves uh, just to come to to, to be again in uh, in this place but some of them already at that moment already in 1940-45 believed that it is very important to preserve the site so, somehow but we must remember that at that time, uh, Auschwitz was in fact in the hands of the so Soviet, uh, Soviet army who created a camp for German POWs in part of the camp. Uh, but the survivors who came back were allowed to um, stay uh, at, the, at the former camp and they started collecting the leftovers of documents or other artifacts that SS soldiers didn't manage to, to destroy. Uh, they, there was a huge attempt of destroying the, all the evidence in the end of 1944. SS men managed to destroy the majority of, of, of the documents. However, what was left was left later collected by, uh, by the survivors who, who came, uh, came back to the museum. And such a little bit chaotic situation lasted for about a year and a half. And then in mid-1940-47, uh, our museum was, was established. On one hand, it was triggered, of course, by those who, survivors who came back. But uh, on, the other, on the other hand, uh, there were also some survivors of, of Auschwitz who were involved in a communist government in, in Poland after the war. And it was the, like their joint initiative to, to create the, the site and to create the Auschwitz, uh, Auschwitz Memorial. 
And although today, I think, if we think about Auschwitz, uh, then we immediately associate uh, Auschwitz and Birkenau, so two main main sites. Uh, I just like to, to stress that in the you know, in 1940, 45, 46, it was not that clear and obvious that both sites will be protected. Uh, there were supporters of, of the idea that Birkenau, because of the atrocities that were committed there, should be completely completely destroyed, should be left as a, as a desert, deserted land. And uh, there was a, a big fight among the supporters of that, uh, that, uh, that options and the supporters of the option to of preserving of both Auschwitz and, and Birkenau. And luckily, the second option, of course, uh, took over and, and today people can visit and see the remnants of both Auschwitz and, and Birkenau. And we believe that, in fact, it is impossible to understand what happened in Auschwitz without understand, seeing and understanding Birkenau and just the opposite. It is un, unable, impossible to understand Birkenau without, without Auschwitz. So we just need to remember that these are two different camps, but linked close one, one next to another. As it was already said here, already in 1979, uh, Auschwitz became part of the UNESCO list of the World Heritage, so more or less 30 years after it was established as, as, as a memorial. Uh, and this is the only example of such places on, 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 on this list, I mean, of uh, former Nazi death and, and concentration camps. So this is the example of the past prototype of, of, of this, of this camps. And I think over the years, uh, Auschwitz Memorial became, in a way, the voice of all these memorials of the former uh, former Nazi, Nazi Nazi regime. And um, but on the other hand, um, it is very difficult to define pre precisely our position. I mean, the position of Auschwitz Museum uh, within the community of of, of such this this sites. Uh, we of course have some contacts with the UNESCO who come who come to visit uh, Auschwitz Memorial, who come to assess also what we are doing and if you are if we are sticking to the regulations of of the UNESCO. But we don't really have much contacts with with uh, with other um, other sites with, within the com community. But coming back to to the memory memory and what we really try to do and what we are trying to convey in, in, in the museum. I think that there are two main purposes of Auschwitz Museum today. One is to just to preserve the physical remnants of, of the former camps. Because we know very well that the authenticity of the place plays a very important role for people who, who are coming to, to, to our memorial. And the other thing is to, of course, to educate, to educate about the atrocities committed, committed in Auschwitz, mainly about the Holocaust, of course, because Auschwitz also at some point became the, the central, the focal point uh, of the collective memory about, about the Holocaust. But we also try not to forget about other victims of, of, of the place, meaning Poles, meaning Soviet prisons of war, meaning sentient drama people and, and, and many others. And the message we, we are trying to, to convey, we are trying to, our visitors to understand is that uh, Auschwitz was not the beginning of, of, of the genocide. Uh, it was just the opposite. It, it was the, its final stage. It was the, because it all started uh, much earlier. This elaborated, this sophisticated genocide started not in the gas chambers, but it started you know, on the streets. Uh, it started with the words, it started with the hatred. It started also, which is very important, and which is always stressed by, by survivors by, with indifference, with indifference of the society. People who saw that uh, atrocities are being committed on, on Jews, on, 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 on other people, and prefer not to look uh, on this, turn, turn their, their backs, or, or they just prefer to, to, to stay silent. And therefore, we think it is very important to educate people and to make them aware that this kind of radicalization may lead in some extreme situations to, 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 to another genocide. But we have, I think, also one more message, and uh, 
maybe not even the message, but more, but more the challenge for, for the future. And I think all the memorial sites will at some point face the same, the same challenge. And the challenge is that um, we're really facing the time where there will be no survivors with, with us. Uh, the youngest survivors today are in their mid 80s. Uh, and they were, in fact, children when when, when they went through when, when went through through the camp. So this is this is really a big challenge for us: how to educate about Auschwitz and the Holocaust without without the survivors. Uh, and we must make our visitors also aware that at some point they should at least try also today to listen to the survivors who are still alive, because at some point it will be our task. To convey their message to to younger younger generations. Um, thank you, and uh, we'll uh, talk more about. Uh... Muchas gracias, Thomas. Eh, ya veo muchas preguntas, o al menos una pregunta. Thank you, Thomas. I see many questions here. At least one in the chat. I want to remind everybody that as you get questions, you can write them on the chat. And then at the end, we will get into this discussion. Thank you, Thomas. Now we will hear Mikey Gorosito. She's executive director of the ESMA Memory Site Museum, former clandestine center for detention, torture, and extermination. She has a degree in educational sciences and is an expert in international cooperation in Latin American regional integration. She was appointed coordinator of international cooperation and also an analyst, analyst of the UNESCO World Heritage List. And she's executive direction of the museum. Thank you, Mikey. I give you the floor. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you, Thomas, Eloy, Dorote. I um, good morning to everybody here. And of course, I want to thank you from the um, ESMA Memory Site Museum to give us the space for debate and thank the people and institutions that are part of this conversation. Before starting in the context, uh, to answer the trigger questions that Vivian um, gave us to develop this presentation, I would like to talk briefly about our institution. You will probably know that the ESMA Memory Site Museum is an, a former clandestine center for detention, torture, and extermination is located in what was the officer's mess in the a uh, school of an uh, school of the Navy. And it was a very prestigious uh, school in Buenos Aires dedicated to the education of um, of Navy uh, officers. And in Argentina, in 1976, when we started with the military uh, government, mm, there was established here at ESMA a center for detention, torture, and extermination. And there were around 5,000 uh, disappeared people that went through this, and most of them were assassinated. These victims were political activists from revolutionary organizations, social organizations, students, union members, religious, uh, members of religious organizations. The Holy Legal Action and the forced disappearance of people is a crime and is um, depriving people of their freedom. When we recovered our democracy in 1983, ESMA turned in a, to a symbol of those crimes committed by the military dictatorship and through a very long process headed by human rights organizations, Argentine justice derogated laws of impunity. And today 
there are many trials still going on regarding these issues. And in parallel, the whole premise of the ESMA was recovered by the Buenos Aires city government and was transformed through an agreement with the national government into a space for memory and for the defense of human rights. So those crimes against humanity, uh, um, today we have in this place, uh, human rights organizations and, um, and organizations defending human rights. As of 2012, ex-president Christina Kirchner uh, decided to start the construction of the uh, museum. And as Salome was telling you at the beginning of the talk today, a few days ago, we uh, had our seventh uh, anniversary of being a memory site. And as an institution, we are also mm -hmm. a historical monument, historical heritage of Argentina. And also to uh, quote Thomas, it's important to uh, point out that to reach this uh, site, this uh, status, we had to develop long, deep and complex debates about transforming this former clandestine center uh, into a memory site. But today, uh, uh, this site has a wide consensus and um, has wide support that we have received regarding our candidacy to the UNESCO World Heritage List. And it's a project that um, is, is defining us at this point in the life of the institution. The museum today is working on a um, plan to develop the candidacy. And it's a candidacy of the Argentinian state. And today, we are a site that has not yet entered the World Heritage List, but we are working on doing that. It's a candidacy presented by the Argentine state. And we are uh, presenting this to the UNESCO World Heritage as a witness of the darkest night of our country uh, where we had more than 700 clandestine centers of our detention in Argentina. Getting back to the candidacy, it is oriented to contributing to the visibility, international visibility of the two international values that are, um, or state terrorism based in the forced disappearance of people and the value of social consensus to achieve justice. We also consider regarding the candidacy that it is an opportunity not only to point out these values and not only in their context of their relevance in the Argentinian history and international history, but as a contribution to world heritage, because we think that it is a historical memory from Argentina, but also Latin American and worldwide. And we have the obligation of sharing it, teaching it and making it visible. And also remembering that the regional context of the facts symbolized by our museum um, are things that um, Latin American dictatorships developed all over the region. So now we are at a stage of the candidacy to the UNESCO World Heritage List where we already have the technical approval uh, of the committee um, and that happened in March of this year. And we are preparing to receive the inspections. We also are taking part um, and helping our ambassador in UNESCO uh, in her work with a site in World Heritage, Heritage where, uh, well, Mauricio Cohen Salama will talk about that. As I was telling you, 
we also have for this candidacy with the unanimous support of all political sectors represented in our national Congress, the um, Buenos Aires City Legislature and the Human Rights um, Council, and also many social networks, academic networks in the country regionally and in the world. The purpose of our institution and we want to convey, I could tell you it is that the ESMA Memory Site Museum is a symbol and witness of something that we need to sustain and preserve for the citizenship, not only at national level, but regionally and worldwide. And to uh, foster these feelings of truth and justice, the museum must uh, fulfill educational missions uh, spread the word and we only need not only need to talk about what happened at the site during the military dictatorship but also the policies of uh, truth justice um, and we also want to contribute uh, to the danger of some uh, speeches our site is part of the uh, memory sites uh, in Argentina that appeared from 1976 from to 1983. And in this sense, so the debates in our site and other sites in the country is uh, defined by the need of uh, conserving them, generating consensus, widening or broadening the, on, the audience, social participation, and to link them to the tools uh, that we need to continue preserving the memory and debates on uh, heritage and human rights, but also to the sustainability of our institutions and working together with human rights organisms and with survivors and their families. So I am... Um, this is my presentation. I thank you for listening to me and I give the floor. Uh, uh, thank you, Mikey. We will continue this discussion later and there will be questions, I'm sure. I wanted to remind everybody who came in late in the, to the webinar that and the lower right of your screen, there's a button that says interpretation and you can choose the channel in which you want to listen to this in English or Spanish. Our next speaker is Eloy Colley. He is the conservation head of the um, House of Slaves at the Gore Island. He's also a consultant of the project for revitalization of the House of Slaves managed by the Ford Foundation and the Senegalese state. He has worked with um, for more than 35 years for preserving the African cultural heritage. Eloi, please, you have the floor. Welcome. So just to thank uh, everyone, everyone and everybody. Very happy to uh, participate to uh, this uh, event and also very happy to share with the world about Gore Island. And also to say that uh, the island of Gore this is uh, discovered by the Portuguese navigator, Denis Diaz in 1444. But uh, during a very long time, the island was between rivalries of European nations uh, battling uh, to control the harbor. They are Portuguese, Dutch, French, British, and uh, French again. A very a small island of because of the dimension. 900 meters long for three meters large. And the high zone peaks at 
36 meters in the south on 45,730 and 30 square meters of surface, which represents 30% of the total surface. And the island is a municipality. We have a mayor and a council in the island. But also the island is inscribed Please, I'm back. And there is a national committee of uh, safeguarding includes representations of uh, Ministry of Culture and Communication, DPC, Municipality of Gore, associations, of the island of Gore, the Dakar port, Sea Link Dakar Gore, and the local office of initiatives and tourism. There is a strong commitment and a connection to the site by local communities. The island of Gori and the house of slaves crystallized representation of slavery and cannot be disconnected from the bigger picture of need and needed to address the economic impact of because too many visitors. But what is important to say is uh, uh, that we have also a management plan. The management plan is uh, ongoing. And it's, we suppose to finish, uh, and it's supposed to finish uh, last year, but we, we uh, uh, need to evaluate all the management plan, it is very important. And I would like to say that uh, the communities uh, is, uh, are very important in uh, the site. As a, a site of We use as a tool of management the Convention of UNESCO. It is uh, something very important, and we um, uh, suppose that to uh, to um, the concerning Gore Island, we uh, suppose that to uh, continue to the work in preserving uh, the uh, all the, the entire island, and also. Um, and the, uh, also to fight with the impact. I was talking about the um, visitors of, because of the, uh, 
the uh, uh, we uh, welcome specifically uh, students of because the uh, uh, slave trade is a part of uh, in Senegal of uh, our school uh, curriculum and it's uh, represent sometimes we welcome over or more than 1500 kids in the same day it's a very big problem so now how to combine the uh, needs of the local communities and uh, to address really the history uh, concerning the protection and the preservation of uh, the memory of the victims of because I'm talking about a uh, slavery and the slave trade. It's uh, a very, a very, a very, a very big challenge that we have to face. So in addition, what is important to consider is uh, the implication of communities in the management of uh, the island. Even we have uh, three levels, the municipality, the Senegal state, and the communities. But uh, the communities uh, are very important as a stakeholders of because with the protection of the island, we protect for the communities first and for human being secondly. That is uh, something, but uh, it's uh, also, I, uh, I have uh, many difficulties uh, to, to explain what I, uh, feel exactly of uh, uh, because of the um, limitation of uh, uh, my uh, English, but uh, I can understand and wait uh, for the rest of uh, the speakers to share uh, uh, knowledge and to know better what is it possible to do in terms of uh, protection of, uh, of uh, um, memories and in uh, order to refuse the repetition of the bad history. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias, Eloy, por su contribución. Uh, continuaremos Thank you, Eloy, for your contribution. We'll continue this debate that you have started during in the question and answer session, I will remind you that you can write down your questions in the chat and will be so we can um, send these questions to the panelists. We are going to finish with Mauricio Cohen Salama. Mauricio is the director of content and museographic production of the ESMA Memory Site Museum, former clandestine center of detention, torture, and extermination. He's an expert of organizational development. He was assigned to handle the whole process. Thank you very much for being here. I give you the floor. Thank you, Vinian that guides is all the participants and the people who are listening to us. As the side of memory and, and heritage is to talk about how is this situation of this kind regarding the UNESCO. The topic of the memory sites was very controversial for the UNESCO because the list of the 
the word list was not created for memory sites, was created for more conventional heritage sites. To say with simple word, what we heritage supporters thought when is goods that express a culture and memory sites, there is a completely different process, the places that were created with other uh, purpose and they became important because what happened there. So they link that memory in the say memory side sometimes is traumatic with a human being. In the case of the ESMA memory side, this was created as a officer, officer's casino. And today is a memory side because it was a clandestine center of torture and extermination. And this not usual path to determine as it was always created some friction within the com world committee and this generated a debate at the beginning the debate had to do the criteria six the criteria that of the places that have memory associated or linked that are important the criteria six was the uh, object of uh, controversy in some moment the committee said is there is no heritage place can be presented only as criteria six and then they flexibilize this position and preferentially they have to present criteria six associated to another criteria so the place was not created as an expression of culture, but it's important because there, in that situation, in that place, something happened that was relevant. This always was controversial, but this controversy that has to be the concept of what is heritage, we added a um, larger topic that the traumatic memory of recent conflicts. And we started thinking the recent conflict com with memory, uh, traumatic memories didn't have to have a place in the list of the world heritage. And there a debate started in the most important moment of this debate in 2018, a presentation of France and Belgium. The committee decides to suspend, to cancel this assessment of this submission, this presenter with the cemeteries of the First World War, we are going to call different stakeholders and group of experts to um, assess and make a decision if the memory sites have to be in, in and in what conditions they should be in the word list. So they uh, convene different associations, the memory sites association, there are groups of non-NGOs that I, advises or is a consultant of the UNESCO and 2019 a group of experts that it does not recommend the memory sites has to do with um, recent conflicts and the and memories that divide society they should not be in the word list and there is an exception uh, for example, uh, there is an exception for the slave trade because they don't consider this a recent conflict. It's from is 20th century onwards. And the, probably the slave trade was before that. This is something that is uh, doesn't exist any longer, so it is not considered recent. So that was accepted, uh, exceptuated in this list. In February of 2020, they give the memory sites should not be in the world is based on they generate divisions, they generate gaps, there are interpretations that have not been, have not the maturity they need. And this is in the middle of the pandemic of 2020. There is no answer, no response to this. And there, the, there in July of 2021 in China, there is a meeting there's an opposition of many countries uh, headed by the African countries. They meet, they had a meeting in April 2021 to uh, be against 
of this recommendation of the experts not to include it in the word list. And in China, they have a protest of many countries, Argentina companies, France, Belgium, Thailand, many, many countries are against. So they have an open work team to review, to revise these uh, positions. This open work it starts uh, with different sessions and casually yesterday we are part of the Argentine delegation of this work group and we had the last, the, the, there was a session yesterday and tomorrow we have the last one. What I, this is what I'm going to share with you. We haven't finished the sessions, but what is just about to be decided in this work group, we release the suspension for the memory sites. Memory sites should be if they comply with the requirements of the word list of the UNESCO. It, the, this is already discarded, it's ruled out, and we accept that there, there are some problems and some memory sites that generate divisions between states or within the society. So what the last thing we are debating these days, tomorrow, yesterday and tomorrow, what mechanisms could exist? So a state, if they have to, they're questioned this memory sites and they're opposed to that presentation, if they can have mechanism to uh, cancel that uh, suspension. So what we recognize as memory sites, there are places that they have a special treatment. What we are trying to agree on is what is this special treatment they should have. And we are in the last stages. It will supposedly tomorrow we have the last meeting. We will get to a conclusion, an agreement with, among the countries that promote the memory sites and others that are a little bit reluctant. And, uh, and most of them agree that they should be within the word list uh, this memory site should be in the word list of the UNESCO. And thank you so much for as, uh, inviting me to participate. Thank you, Mauricio, for giving us this wider um, view or perspective. And we are going to transition this to the when we are going to start this debate, including the participants that they already sent several questions in this in the in the chat and if there are more questions you can write them down the chat and the first question is is for thomas and it's about the si memory sites of the holocaust and the question is the as a as a place of it of the holocaust how do you uh work with speeches of denial how when we extend the evidence to the from the physical to the virtual field can we change that well this is a very good question of course probably even a topic on a um, separate uh, meeting and, and lecture um well first of all we do experience um, the presence and uh, acts of uh, the denial of, of, of the Holocaust. Uh, I think in recent years, uh, less than, than it was it was before, uh, but uh, but it, it is still still some, somehow some, somehow happening. Uh, to be honest, nowadays most of these acts of the denial are rather um, um, vandalizing the place with with the graffitis or or with all kinds of inscriptions. We had a a big issue um, in October last last year when uh, just the unknown people vandalized nine barracks in in former beer beer canal camp with really terrible uh, anti-semitic uh, anti-semitic uh, gra graffitis um i think it is mostly be because people know that and they they expect that that if they will do something in auschwitz the, the press about that and uh, in fact our policy in, in this in this case is that we are rather we do not really want the press to 
to inform about about that because we know very well that this is one of the aims of of these of these groups they want somehow to be present in the uh, in the, in the media and um, but uh, we also have uh, sometimes people who join, uh, uh, for example, uh, guided guided tours in in a, in a museum, and they ask uh, all kinds of provocative questions. Uh, and then it is, of course, a big challenge for, for for the guide. It's part of the training of the guides how to cope with with such such questions and and challenges. But obviously, every situation is is different. Uh, so uh, it is it is really very very difficult to to to, to cope with this uh, on the other hand i think this kind of acts are still more present online than on site which which means that um it's not that common that that many deniers really come and visit auschwitz auschwitz memorial or maybe in other ways maybe there are more of them but they just do not express themselves as as uh, as as a den deniers, direct deniers. Muchas gracias, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. The next question, whoever or any of the panelists can answer the questions. When there is a memory site that is clearly clear of heritage by. UNESCO, there is exist that the other memory sites of the country or the same kind of atrocity could be devaluated or regarding budget, visibility. Mikey. It's just a detail. Probably we both want to say something with Mauricio. In our case, to present, to submit the candidacy in the first support and the first consensus was from the human rights that are part of the uh, advising committee and the consensus of a presentation of all the memory sites of our country that is why we were i was telling you before that this candidacy represents Is, is, this is submitted also representing other memory sites. And how is a candidacy as an Argentine state, the commitment of the Argentine government and the preservation of this basis as a public policy, not only is addressed to the preservation of our uh, ESMA site, but all the memory sites of sites of memory of the country. Thank you, Mikey. In fact, I would like to go back about denial because one of the webinars was dedicated exclusively to denial. I would like to invite a Mikey and Mauricio if they can share this question as a ESMA memory site. How do you uh, deal with denial, with uh, deniers? In really, in Argentina, we had a very long process to, of social consensus linked to crimes of the military dictatorship. There was a very important moment when the democracy came back to our country. Alfonsín had a commission, a national commission, uh, and with a very complete report that drove uh, the, to the trial of the military coup. And there was a body of evidence, of information, of reports that what had happened, and that created a very wide, very broad social uh, consensus. And then there was our related to power, related to military forces that were la laws that they could limit the court action and some uh, pardons, the, but that never had uh, support because there was a conscience and awareness in the society that uh, made us to revert all this, to continue with the trial. We have more than 1,000 
uh, sentences towards the uh, military dictatorship. So it, it's very, very minority, the possibility of having a denier, uh, a denial, uh, because we have a social, we have unanim unanimous support of the whole line of a uh, of a parliament members of all the different parties and uh, human rights when all governors of all the the provinces are represented thank you to, thanks to this um social consensus this uh, denier so denial is very very limited something that is very we have a uh, causes where the crimes have been proved with evidence there's not only a speech there were causes where the court already decided so fortunately denial in argentina is something that is very restricted very limited and has to we are talking about a crime in the south the forced disappearance of person that is the common one in all south america not only in argentina in the disappearance of people, the, co the most important cause of the world re related to forced disappearance took place here in Argentina and has many, many sections, many of different uh, trials related to that. There is, there is um, a lot of jurisprudence and uh, this helps a lot and these small groups that try to deny they have no space for that we invite a, our participant to watch the webinar we had we are, have a link to that webinar about denier we continue with the next question that is for eloy the question is is there any interest of the descendant of slaves in america with the east isle of gore a slave trade island the art jammers for example visitors the contribute of this descendants of slave to improve the management of the island as a memory site yes yes of course uh, that's why we are uh, working uh, now in uh, uh, project, uh, so called uh, the project of uh, revitalization of the House of Slaves, that uh, consists in the rehabilitation of the two buildings, the memorialization space uh, properly, including the second building just uh, in the front of the House of Slaves, that will be in uh, a very uh, near future the International Center of Integration and Documentation on Slavery and the Slave Trade linked to the memorialization space. So we suppose also to build new exhibitions of because the old used to one uh, didn't take into consideration new implication and new forms. And also to uh, organize, to re evaluate the uh, uh, the knowledge of the local guides. It is something very important that we have to do. Uh, just to consider that uh, 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 slavery, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, implication of uh, slavery and the consequences in order to refuse the repetition of the history. So, uh, what uh, it is important uh, for also for children that we welcome in uh, side the house of slaves is uh, to uh, give them tools to better understand what's happened and to consider that uh, slavery and the slave trade is a part of the history of human beings and also uh, considering the consequences is uh, to uh, the consequence is uh, some uh, quite the deconstruction of uh, 
uh, of uh, Africans of because uh, they uh, definitely uh, uh, lost the uh, self-esteem. It's very important for uh, kids to regain the self-esteem. It is uh, something uh, very uh, important, but also uh, you know that uh, uh, the Fowl Foundation of the United States had put a lot of money in this project. The uh, Fowl Foundation put uh, one million dollars, but also the Senegalese state uh, put eight hundred thousand dollars. So it is uh, something uh, quite very important, and uh, uh, the purpose of the work is. Uh, uh, to put at the disposal of uh, uh, stakeholders at the, discovery, uh, the disposal of humanity um, more information about the consequences and uh, to uh, look what's happened uh, between 16 and uh, uh, 19th included in the very beginning of because we have also to address the uh, uh, Arab uh, slave trade. So it's uh, all the violations of uh, human rights that you have to address by addressing what's happened uh, during the 16s. I'm talking about uh, slavery and the slave trade. Muchas gracias, Eloy. Continuamos con la siguiente pregunta. Thank you, Aloy. We continue with the next question. Taking into account the current situation at world level and the advances of the right in several countries, would it be possible to start an international action from these places, these sites, a massive and open uh, action, open to the community? Would that be possible? Who would like to answer? this question. Thomas, te gustaría... Thomas, so would you like to delve a little into this? Your microphone is muted. Well, um, I think obviously Creo que obviamente we can try. Podemos intentarlo, pero por otro lado, I'm, I'm not, not sure no if estoy seguro si tal acción beneficiaría algo. La razón por la cual yo me sentí pesimista hacia acciones similares, para ser honesto, es que en algunos puntos aún eh, eh, al tomar acciones grandes y globales, lo que es importante es trabajar a for en forma local. Este es el punto de of course, go, go globally and announce big, big actions, but then what is necessary is not only to start such action, but then, then also to continue, you know, to, to engage people and, and, and so on. And I think in, in the cases of our sites, it's, it's easier and more fruitful to start it on a local, local level and maybe then after build up and, and go, go more, more global. Gracias, Tomás. Mikey, ¿te gustaría añadir algo? Thank you, Thomas. Mikey, would you like to add something? Mikey, quisieras añadir algo? Veo que levantaste la Mikey, mano. Mikey, no would si... you like to add something? I see you raised your hand. I want to add regarding this question that we are responsible of these institutions. We have an international agenda defined, and in two cases, 
and it has um, given has uh, acted in the World Heritage uh, UNESCO World Heritage list and is to make people aware of what happened, at least in Argentina. So regarding international actions, maybe we are already involved in those because with the, um, the activity uh, that uh, requires um, a candidacy and be approved, we don't only define the, the file for the candidacy, but we do many presentations at regional level in Mercosur and also internationally with universities, uh, social organizations, uh, unions, with the diplomatic uh, bodies. That gives visibility to the horrors that were committed and it's an open action. It's open to the community as the question goes. So I think the best we can do in this sense and in the sense uh, that the person asking the question poses is to comply in a very highly committed and professional way with the functions that our site museums have and take this to an international level that will give visibility to the crimes committed. And in that sense, I think is the best way uh, to, to fight the negation, the, the ne negation speeches, at least from our point of view, from Argentina and our point of view. And in other cases, well, political parties, associations, Thank you. Next question is for Eloy and Thomas. How is the cooperation between World Heritage Sites? And what makes you different from other World Heritage Sites as to the support you receive from UNESCO? Who would like to start, Thomas or Eloy? So what is, uh, is uh, what is particular uh, is uh, that we are a uh, war age side. It's a one, or, uh, but in the second hand, we uh, also, uh, I'm talking about the slave house. We are a member, a founding member of uh, the International Coalition of Sites of Conscience. So that's what uh, that's uh, the two, we uh, 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 suppose uh, to fight all violations. The inscription of the uh, uh, Gore Island is uh, in uh, 1966, uh, uh, 76. Um, no, 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 in. Uh, uh, yes, in 1968, it's uh, one of the first African sites uh, uh, as a uh, World Heritage Site in uh, the UNESCO. But UNESCO uh, also helps us in uh, different ways in the implementations of many uh, programs local programs concerning uh, uh, Gore uh, Island, but also of because the implication of uh, the municipality. So we're supposed to work together to protect and to maintain the island in the principles of the convention. That's something uh, different, but I'm also in addition, would uh, to would like to, in addition, to talk about the implication of the local communities as a stakeholders. Of because they they have to appropriate. So the uh, uh, the. Uh, to appropriate um, everything that we, uh, uh, everything 
that uh, we uh, suppose uh, to implement inside the uh, management plan. It's uh, something that we uh, do inclusively. It's uh, very important. Gracias, Eloy. Thomas, te gustaría responder a la pregunta? Thank you, Eloy. Thomas, would you like to add something? Uh, the second part of, of the question, which, which is uh, uh, what differs uh, what is the difference in terms of the support of, of, of the UNESCO? And uh, I can only tell on um, like the lo local, uh, the local context. Uh, well, I don't think there there is a big difference between Auschwitz Memorial and other memorial sites, for example, in, in Poland or in in, in, in Germany. Uh, in terms of the, the the support, we of course we are in touch with with, with the UNESCO with, with the with the UN, but in case of our memorial site, it does not mean any uh, bigger support. I mean, not financial or whatever. So uh, and it is it is similar also in case of uh, of other memorial sites uh, in 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 Poland or, or or in Germany. So so I think. Uh, the fact that we are recognized is of course important in terms of the fact that people basically people want to learn more about the holocaust basically choose auschwitz as a place to to to, to learn about that not other other memorial sites but except for that um there is no no big difference Gracias, Thomas. Eh, nos quedan un par thank de... you thomas we still have a couple means before we finish the webinar so before we finish i wanted to invite all panelists to uh, give us any final um, reflections that you want to briefly share with us if any of you thomas eloi mikey mauricio want to share any final thoughts with us some closing words Uh, just to say that uh, we uh, need to to, uh, to better um, uh, stay in uh, uh, terms of uh, memorialization is uh, to work inclusively. Gracias, Eloy. Thomas? Thank you, Eloy. Thomas? To say that um, I really appreciate the the initiative of of this of this webinar and of meeting the, the participants. We've met with some of you. We've met before also online, but I'm I'm really happy that uh, in a way uh, we are able to meet to build this this network between between our our sites, and I'm, I'm really sure that this will benefit also also in the future even in terms of developing uh, some future future programs or any kind of cooperation so uh you know maybe the unesco or the list is just uh, some kind of a beginning of, of of the future future cooperation and really thank you again for Gracias, Thomas, con esas, por esas palabras. Y Thank you que... for your words, Thomas, and I hope this is the beginning of something. Mikey and Mauricio, would you like to add something? I feel the same as Thomas because for us, this is important. First, to be talking to participants that we never see. <clears throat> so we thank you to for the integration and the interest in these topics, but also talking with Thomas and Eloy, this is an opportunity for us to think together in a technical cooperation that is might be feasible because there are many debates that we need to address together and also there are many initiatives, cooperation initiatives or uh, joint uh, learning that we could uh, materialize 
So in that sense, uh, we also see this as a great opportunity and we want to thank you again for being with us. Thank you, Mikey, Mauricio, do you want to have some final words? All I want to say is that sometimes we think, well, we have some questions, how to end this type of violent situations once and for all, what action could we do to end this? And it's, it's not possible. It's a constant work that must be completely and continuously renovated and it is forever. And that is our job, is to continue in time, continuity in time. Thank you, Mauricio. And with this, I would like to thank all the panelists Mikey, Mauricio, everybody for your time. Also the audience for your questions and contributions that have enriched this debate and discussion. And with this, I um, will say goodbye. I give the floor to Salome for final words. Thank you very much again. Well, uh, thank you everybody for participating. This was a rich debate that allowed us to know a bit more about the current situation of other emblematic uh, memory places. So I want to thank everyone for your virtual uh, presence and on behalf of the ESMA Museum and Memory Site. And of course, always invite our audience to visit the sites to live the experience in person of what it means to walk through one of these memory sites and to get to know those traumatic memories up close so we will never repeat them again. Thank you, everybody.